Now, welcome PSF President, Dr. Nicholas Vetter. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us here. The Plastic Surgery Foundation truly is a jewel for the specialty of plastic surgery. It's a perfect example of that life principle that the more you're willing to give, the more you will receive in the end. And it's been my distinct honor to serve as its 51st president. The PSF has a very rich heritage, and I follow in the footsteps of many of my mentors in this position, leaders, legends in the history of plastic surgery. I feel very humbled. You know, we've all been given a tremendous gift to be a plastic surgeon. Every day I get up, I know that I will have an opportunity that day to make a difference in a patient's life that will last them their entire life. I can't think of anything more rewarding on earth. Unlike other surgical specialties that are based on anatomic region or a system of the human body, plastic surgery encompasses the entire human body and is instead based on one principle, innovation. By continually watering the seeds of innovation, we can ensure that they blossom long into the future. Yes, other specialties may adopt the techniques, methods, and approaches that we've developed, but we're the innovators. And we can't continue on this path of innovation without your support of the PSF. Developing creative solutions to medicine and surgery's most challenging prob problems literally from head to toe, improving quality of life, reducing hospital stay, and allowing surgery to go where it could not have gone in the past. These are tremendously valuable to all of medicine. But demonstrating the value of what we do is a major challenge that we can only address with good data. In the new era we're entering of value-based payment instead of traditional fee-for-service, it will become increasingly important for plastic surgery to demonstrate its value to the larger integrated healthcare system. To this end, in recent years, the PSF has placed great emphasis on supporting outcome studies including the development of patient-reported outcomes tools, clinical trials, and practice-enabling clinical registries. This data will drive the future of our specialty. The PSF welcomes our donations and turns them into critical investments, which include nearly half a million dollars in PSF-initiated clinical studies and data registries in areas including the safety and efficacy of fat grafting, our craft study and graft registry, and our critical quality of life measurement studies, including the breast cue, face cue, and cleft cue. In addition, we've made substantial investments in the National Breast Implant Registry. In, in conjunction with the FDA, it is perhaps the most impactful registry we've ever undertaken. And there's the Profile Registry, which looks at the etiology and epidemiology of anaplastic large cell lymphomas association with breast implants. These registries will provide the data framework for the safe and efficacious use of breast implants now and into the future. These are practice-enabling registries that all plastic surgeons need to participate in. Without this data, our future practices are in jeopardy. These investments in quality data collection throughout the specialty truly are imperative investments in creating the future of the clinical practice of plastic surgery. Over the past year, the PSF has invested over $1.2 million in clinically relevant plastic surgery research programs, with more than $650,000 going directly to investigator-initiated projects, including both basic science and clinical research. In the basic science arena, PSF-funded research has led to important discoveries in areas that will define the future of the specialty. In addition, the PSF has invested $150,000 to support research fellowships to train the next generation of plastic surgery research leaders. Your donations have been the seed money for many of these investigators to develop larger studies funded by agencies such as the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense. Two great examples are Dr. Amy Moore at Washington University, who I saw back there, uh, and Ben Levy at the University of Michigan. Each has transformed their pilot national endowment and PSF grants into multi-million dollar federal research grants. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the future of plastic surgery. In fact, this past year alone, recipients of these PSF startup grants have gone on to be awarded over $6 million in federally funded research grants. 
That's a 1,000% return on our investment in these researchers. It's stories like these that really show the value that your donation brings to the PSF and to the specialty. It is indeed an incredible investment in plastic surgery, which is why your support of the PSF is absolutely critical both to your practice and to the future of the specialty. In the past year, the PSF has also embraced its philanthropic side and given nearly $375,000 in charitable care grants through multiple avenues. As many of us who practice at safety net hospitals know, you don't need to travel around the world to find children in need of life-altering plastic surgery, but without access to it. Our new collaboration with Fresh Start Surgical Gifts of San Diego, our Fresh Start Caring for Kids Foundation addresses this very problem here at home. This foundation provides no cost, life-changing reconstructive surgery from volunteer hospitals, clinics, and board-certified plastic surgeons to children with congenital deformities and injuries in the United States, giving these children a fresh start on life. We were very happy to help with an investment of $200,000. The PSF also supports a number of public awareness efforts, such as the Breast Reconstruction Awareness Campaign and Fund, which strives to ensure that every breast cancer patient knows her reconstructive options. Our Breast Reconstruction Awareness Fund grant program provides charitable care grants for uninsured and underinsured women in underserved communities. Our public awareness grants raise awareness of breast reconstruction surgery options in the community. And our breast reconstruction research grants help advance the science. If you're going to join us at Jay Leno Live Monday, thank you. If you're wondering how you can help, buy a ticket. Please join all of us Monday evening to support breast reconstruction awareness. This is going to be a truly amazing event. Um, seating is limited, tickets are selling out, so please get your tickets now. I'd like to especially recognize Mentor for their diamond level support of the Breast Reconstruction Awareness Fund. Now, I have to tell you a sad truth. A decade ago, 70% of ASPS members contributed to the PSF. But today, that number is only 17%. A mere 17% of you see the value in contributing to the future of our great specialty. I hope that today you will reconsider and give to the PSF. For me personally, it is the single most important investment I make every year. Again, it's a perfect example of that most important life principle, the more you're willing to give, the more you will receive in the end. Please, every one of you, give to the PSF. You know, the PSF has a very simple mission, to improve the quality of patient care and create the future of the specialty through research and development. We need your investment. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity to, re to recognize the fellows of the Maliniac Circle. who are all major donors to the specialty, and I ask all of them to stand and be recognized along with your spouses. So please, Maliniacs, stand. Susan. Thank you. Thank you all. If you want to find out how to join, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> uh, in closing, I have uh, many people to thank for the accomplishments of the PSF over the past year, but I'm only going to take time to uh, name a few of the many among the outstanding ASPS and PSF staff and others. First is Keith Hume, the staff vice president and chief operating officer of the P PSF, who is truly the engineer of this PSF train, helping us create the vision and keeping us rolling forward at full speed. Michael Costello, the Executive Vice President of ASPS PSF, who took the helm several years ago and has truly transformed the organization into a global powerhouse for the specialty. And very specially, Scott Glassberg, the President of ASPS, who I've had the distinct honor of serving alongside this past year. Now, as many of you out there who are our friends know very well, Scott and I were oil and water a decade ago. But through this shared leadership responsibility, we have become truly aligned with a single vision for the specialty. I have the utmost respect for Scott and sincerely believe that he has contributed more to this organization than any other individual I know. So thank you, Scott. Republicans and Democrats actually can work together. 
I'll let you figure out who's who there. Um, and, and I'd like to thank my family. My wife and soulmate of 42 years, Susan Heckbert, MD, PhD. Um, I revel in acknowledging the fact that she is way more famous in the world of medicine than I ever will be. And I love her dearly. My son, Nick, daughter, Katie, I'm very proud of them and delighted that they're all here with us today. Thank you so much for your love and support and for putting up with me. So can I indulge you and ask you to stand, please? <laughs> And finally, I'd like to thank my patients over the past 25 years as an attending faculty member at the University of Washington. My patients have had the single greatest influence in my career. I look to my experiences with my patients every day for my moral compass, my grounding, the reason I enjoy so much being a plastic surgeon. After being up all night on call at the operating microscope, I'm dreading a day of clinic ahead. But these patients remind me why I love doing it. Patients like, now, any non-plastic surgeons in the audience, you might want to avert your eyes. Um, the Boeing engineer who amputated all five digits of his dominant hand that we were able to successfully replant, returning him to his career and doing what he loves. The young woman in a fish processing plant who got her hair caught in a machine, avulsing her entire scalp and part of her left ear, being able to replant it microsurgically then later using the magic of plastic surgery to tissue expand the replanted scalp and restore her to herself. And here she is 20 years later. Rebuilding lives, that's our gift as plastic surgeons. Over the past 12 years, the Society's Patients of Courage Awards have been an important part of the opening ceremonies. These inspirational patients remind us of the rewards of being plastic surgeons. To close, I want to acknowledge my own patient of courage. Deep breath here. <laughs> I see her photo on the wall of my office every day I come in and uh, every day I leave. She was seven years old when she nearly lost both of her feet in a boating accident on Lake Washington where I live in Seattle. Fortunately, using the techniques of plastic surgery and microsurgery, including a latissimus dorsi free flap, we were able to save both of her feet and return her to a, a normal life with a bright future ahead of her and in some ways an even stronger future as she had learned to overcome adversity in a way that few of her age have had to do. Out of adversity comes strength. came in and uh, dropped our friends off and took off. And the big uh, tube was in the back of the boat. It was tied off, but what happened was I think the knot gave way and it came loose and um, yanked up. The coil wrapped around her feet and pulled her up and out of the boat. And she'd um, probably flown you know, I don't know, 50 or 100 feet straight out of the back of the boat and was, you know, pulled up by the rope. But I, I, anyway, I got her to the boat and lifted her out onto the uh, stern. And that was, you know, when I saw all her injuries. And um, her uh, foot had, you know, um, been, uh, well, her, her left foot was all the way down to the bone and, and the right foot was just hanging by a couple of tendons. I didn't think there was going to be a Band-Aid big enough to fix this. Um, at that moment, I thought Lily was going to die just from the blood loss and the shock. Um, I'm pretty certain she was going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life if she survived this. What I saw was two feet that were barely hanging on. Certainly the right foot was just barely hanging on and it had no, no blood flow going to it, so it was dead. And I knew that unless we were able to somehow get blood flow restored to that foot, she would lose her leg. 
I, ha I thought there was a good chance she wouldn't have her foot in the morning. And um, so I, rem I remember, you know, Carol and I hugged a lot, and cried a lot, and, uh, you know, we're sort of maybe prepared for it. And, uh, but we got really lucky. Dr. Dunbar was there from orthopedics, and he was able to quickly put a plate across the, the tibia to fix the bone, while uh, Dr. Kohler from vascular surgery was helping me harvest the vein from the leg, and we brought in the microscope and were able to hook up, um, reconstruct both her major vein and major artery to get blood flow going back to the, to the foot. And once we were able to do that, um, and it pinked up, uh, I knew that we had we had a chance. At least we had a chance of, of saving her foot. To see her now, it's priceless. There you go. I'm really happy and I'm really thankful and grateful and all these things that they helped me. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be running around and playing all these activities. I didn't have a glimmer of hope, and uh, Harborview truly did more than just give us back a glimmer. They gave us back our daughter. It is uh, my distinct honor to have that brave young woman here with us tonight. She's uh, 13 now. <laughs> And after several additional reconstructive procedures, she is uh, the lead scorer on her middle school lacrosse team, here cutting right on her replanted foot. Lily, please join me. Thank you. So I'd like to present you the 2015 Patients of Courage Award. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>